guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com, and this is a further look at software on the HTC HD Mini. In this video, we're going to compare the HD Mini with its big brother, the HD2. We're going to talk about web browsing, and we're also going to talk about third-party applications and see how they look on this HVGA resolution display. Coming up in the full review on Pocketnow.com, we're going to talk about battery life, performance, call quality, all those sorts of things. But right now, let's get a little bit more into the software aspect of the HD Mini. So I'm going to unlock the screen. And let's bring over the HD2 here. Both of these are running Windows Mobile 6.5.3. That was a custom lock screen that you just saw here. So let's start off on the home screen. On the home screen, between the two devices, you get more information here on the HD2. You get access to your quick links, whereas on the HD Mini, because of the lower resolution screen, you have to flick upwards to see any quick links at all. Let's go over to the People tab which looks pretty much the same. You get to see uh, two and a half rows of pictures. Over here, it's kind of two and a quarter. So not as much information. Of course, you can expect that with a screen that is much, much higher resolution over here on the HD2. If we go into email, we get to see the same email screen, although on the HD2, you get to see more screen information. From here, of course, on both devices, we can delete the messages or reply right from the screen without actually having to drill into uh, the email application. Over here on the internet tab, the same exact screen, we can set quick tiles to quickly go to a certain website, or we can search Google right from the top. Let's go over to the calendar view. And here we are on the same day. I'm going to go out to month view. Calendars look very much similar between the HD2 and the HD mini, which is nice. The HTC calendar is really brilliantly uh, put together and it keeps you from going into the ugly Windows Mobile calendar, which I don't even think you can get to anymore uh, because HTC has covered it up with this beautiful Sense interface. Let's go to the Stocks tab. Very similar Stocks tab, a slightly newer version here on the HD2. We can tap on one of these in particular, and you get a lot more on the screen. We can tap to update data, and there it goes. And on the HD2, we should be able to go into, doesn't look like we can go into landscape. Actually, on, on, on either de neither device, we can go into landscape. So let's go back. But here in photos, we can flick our pictures upward. Very smooth animation on both devices. But where things get a little bit different is that on the HD2, you can rotate and get this beautiful animation. But on the HD Mini, it, it doesn't do that. So you have to stay in this portrait view, and you can't get into this really nice looking um, landscape view. Speaking of pictures, let's go to a picture and do some pinch to zoom, because both of these devices have multi-touch. Uh, maybe that's not the best picture. It doesn't look to be high resolution enough. Let's go over to this scene. OK, great. So pinch to zoom works very well on the HD2, very precise. On the HD Mini, for some reason, it's very slow, and you can probably see what I mean. Let me do that again on the HD2. N nice and precise, and on the HD Mini, it's a little bit slower. It's not as sensitive, and I think they do that uh, because the screen is smaller, but it takes more finger movement to get the pictures to move. It almost feels kind of numb. So let's go back, and that will flip over. You can press the back button there. Okay, let's go into weather. And so I'm going to go to weather here and weather here. And it is not picking up my location, so I'm going to real quick add a location. Now let's go to Philadelphia. Okay, there we go. And flick upwards. Okay, so here's Philadelphia on both devices. It looks pretty much the same. Things are smaller on the HD2. You have to squint a little bit to see the high and low temperatures, uh, but basically the animations are the same. And it actually looks like the graphics have been updated just a little bit here on the HD Mini. So let's go over to the Music tab and take a look at what we have there and it says no music found. We'll go into library and see how they differ in terms of this library. Again, they've updated sense a little bit. So now these are colored, really nice looking icons. Over here on this older version of Windows Mobile 6.5.3, you really don't get those colorful icons. Let's go back. Okay, let's continue down. Let's go to footprints something that I really don't think many people use. And just to get an idea of how they compare in terms of graphical power, on the HD2, very smooth animation. And on the HD Mini, you just saw it right there. Kind of choppy. I'm actually surprised it was that choppy. Usually it's a little bit smoother than that. So let me go back here. And, and it looks like it's actually unresponsive. This happens actually more than you would, than you would hope on the HD Mini. It freezes up. Um, 
Okay, there it goes, it's just responded. Probably didn't help that I was tapping the screen a million times, but um, so here it comes. So I'm gonna go back over to footprints. Something is, is slowing down this device, so I'm gonna tap and hold up here really quickly, go to the task manager. So overall, compared to the HD2, it's easy to see how the HD Mini is sort of a light version of the HD2. It's lacking in sort of the, the, the power, the screen resolution isn't even close to what you get on the HD2. It is a similar experience at the end of the day. If somebody wants to have a lower priced device like the HD2 that is smaller and, and uh, perhaps not as, as flashy. So let's go on to the next thing. Let's talk about web browsing on the HD Mini. I'm gonna zoom in on the screen a little bit and let's slide over to the, the internet tab and I'm gonna tap on Pocket Now and it's gonna load up pocketnow.com right in the browser and we're gonna see how it performs. Okay, so it's still going while it's loading, and it looks like it just sort of, oh, it finished right there. I'm going to rotate into landscape, and takes a little bit uh, of time, not very fast here. And we can pan around very smooth. We can do the capacitive pinch to zoom, but again, it feels kind of numb, as if they got the algorithm wrong that determines how much to zoom in, depending on how much, uh, how wide your fingers are. So here it is, here's pocketnow.com. Uh, let me load it up on another device and we can do a speed comparison once we click on one of these permalinks. So here we are on the iPhone. This is actually beta software. This is iPhone 4.0, so it's very likely that it may not be as fast as it normally is, which would be beneficial to, um, to the HD Mini here. So here it comes. And again, we can pinch to zoom. We can pinch to zoom, smoother on the iPhone. I'm gonna tap these links at the exact same time. After this is done loading, actually I'm gonna force it to stop and see which one wins. They're both on the same Wi-Fi network right now, so. You can tell that the screen on the HD Mini is actually crisper and clear. I've always found the screen on the iPhone to be kind of gray and dull. And here they go. And the iPhone has finished, it looks like. Uh, looks like the, the HD Mini has overall loaded the page, but it's still trying to get something there. And we can pinch and move around on the screen like so. Let's go to another website on the HD Mini. Let's go to ngadget.com. And by the way, in a second, we're gonna talk about the keyboard usage. Okay, here it comes. This is an older version of Opera Mobile. Um, this is probably version 9 or, or so, and if you get the newest version of Opera Mobile 10, it has Opera Turbo on it, which increase, increases or decreases page load times. So if you have an HD Mini and you want to get some better performance, definitely check that out. So here we are on Engadget, still loading, but it's loaded for the most part. We can go into Landscape. Hmm. There it goes. And scrolling is pretty smooth. We can, you know, double tap to zoom in. It reflows the column, the text looks good, and we can zoom out. So overall, a pleasant browsing experience on the HD Mini. The small screen makes it difficult to really have precise navigation. And again, that pinch to zoom algorithm doesn't seem to be uh, quite perfected yet. So I'm gonna get out of this. Okay, so let's talk about keyboard, the text entry on the HD Mini. So we're gonna go into, um, We're gonna go into uh, Microsoft Office and click on Word Mobile. Okay, so here we are. We have the standard HTC keyboard, but the story here is that the, the screen is a lot smaller, so it's not as easy to use. So I'm gonna try to type the quick brown fox. Okay, so pretty accurate, the quick brown fix. I didn't quite get everything there. You can actually change the language on the fly, which is sort of new for the HTC keyboards between uh, French, Dutch, and some other ones like Italian here. Something else that is new for this keyboard is that the D-pad arrows are gone. You have to tap and hold this to get the D-pad up and it kind of appears above the keyboard. Now we do have a landscape keyboard, which is a little bit better. 
Okay, so if I go into landscape, okay, here it is. Here we get the landscape keyboard, but you really have no room to see what you're typing. It's so small because the screen is such low resolution. Let me do a test here. The quick brown fox. So uh, again, relatively precise, but it's not the best keyboard in the world because of the small screen and the low resolution uh, on the display. So now let's talk about third-party applications. Now that you've seen the comparisons with the HD2 and some web browsing, beautiful weather animation there, by the way. So I'm going into the start menu now, and you can see sort of the included programs on here, very standard stuff. We'll talk about the YouTube application in a minute. Um, I've installed some apps on here, such as Pocket Informant, which is one of the best ways to, uh, to experience a different kind of calendar on your device. I installed the, the trial, and I'm gonna just click no. And the point of me showing you this is that for some reason, even though Pocket Informant was not made for the screen resolution, it works. Um, we can go to the different views, and I, I've, I've been in this program for a while, and everything seems to work on the screen. So let's get out of here. I want to show you in a, a situation where it doesn't work. So I loaded on here Skyfire, which in our test is the fastest mobile browser for Windows Phone. And watch what happens. You can see off the bat that it's not formatted for this t kind of screen. And then I'm going to wait a second and you're gonna see an error message pop up. Out of memory. Uh, I'm not sure if this is because it's confused with the screen resolution or because the HD Mini just can't handle it. Doesn't make much sense. Uh, because Skyfire works on really any devices, but it's a shame that you can't use Skyfire on the HD Mini. And speaking of third-party applications, I loaded up SBB Mobile Shell, which is the award-winning interface replacement for Windows Mobile. Watch what happens when I go back to the home screen. This is Mobile Shell. It, it just doesn't work on the screen. In fact, it is completely broken. So you can't use Mobile Shell on this resolution screen. Unfortunately, the third-party application story on the HD Mini is not good. There are several applications that I've tried um, that just don't work because of this weird 480 by 320 display. So that was another look at the HTC HD Mini. We've got a lot more coming up in the full review on Pocketnow.com. If you want an HD Mini of your own, you can get one right now at clove.co.uk. Uh, they ship worldwide and they have a stock that they just received this week, actually. That's it for now.